fashion industry is an evolving business. Through all time new trends and influential personas, fashion has become an art that can adapt to any change. However, that wouldn't be the case if we didn't have passionate people who care for this art, shaping the industry to what it is today. With the growing influence of the internet and social media in the industry, fashion can be seen anywhere and everywhere. I spoke to a fashion blogger, a magazine's fashion director, and stylish streetwalkers to get their perspective on just how much blogging has influenced the fashion industry. Marcel Flores is a men's fashion blogger who has been involved in the business for three years. His blog, One Dapper Street, has earned him over 200,000 followers on Instagram, making him an influential figure in the world of blogging. Marcel has taken his momentum and has expanded his image by creating a blog and has been working on starting a shoe line. He invited me to his home in Long Island City where he talks to us about his growing influence, the power of blogging, and where he sees the future of blogging. So Marcel, when did you begin fashion blogging and what got you involved in the industry? Um, I started my blog about three years ago. I um, had studied fashion at the time already. So I, I moved here from Germany just to go to FIT to study fashion marketing and like business side of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Lisa um, back then my ex-girlfriend, <laughs> this is the first time this is like anywhere officially, I think. Um, and she inspired me a lot. So she um, showed me all the creative side to it. Um, she showed me Photoshop and how to take photos and a few of the platforms like lookbook.anu. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I just knew the more like business side to it. And then we kind of worked together. So. Usually people just look at uh, photos and bloggers and stuff and like redo the content they don't know that's business side to right it. exactly so, um, yeah it's cool that you have that knowledge yeah well I, yeah, I yeah again i literally started it as that mm -hmm. you know i know a lot of people are like oh it was just a hobby and then i just started doing it i was like mm -hmm. no I, I i wanted to do it when did you realize that you had a potential for a following uh fairly soon i grew i don't know after like half a year maybe I had like twenty thousand followers which was Kind of crazy, yeah. you know. I was like, I don't know. I got a little lucky because I was one of the first straight guys to really like do something, and I feel I felt like I knew what I was talking about because I'd studied fashion. Yeah. So I was talking a lot about the industry, and um, yeah. So it's it's said that bloggers get sponsor sponsorships um, through their work. When did you begin getting any sponsorships? Is that um, the case with you? It is. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I, I could, you know, I, mm -hmm. I could. Live. <laughs> yeah. It's my full-time full job, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's started maybe like almost a year in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're just a brand approach. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, do you want to work with us? And it's it's kind of cool. Like, I, I mean, I'm going to say I've, I've, I've stumbled and fallen once before where I was like, I said yes to something that I didn't want to do because it was good money. Yeah. Um, it's just, especially in the beginning, it's very temp tempting and like, but I, I did it and I learned from it and ever since it's really just, it doesn't matter, like you can't pay me to put anything on my website, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I don't like it, I don't like it and then dude, you can go and wherever you want to go. How do you um, continue to become innovative? Um, how do you keep your followers interested so that they can stay with you? I get, I actually get bored of my clothes a lot, so like, I have a lot of clothes but I still get bored of them myself, so I'm like, if I'm bored of them, they're probably bored of them too, so I actually try and go get as many new clothes mm -hmm. as possible, it's like, so it's most relevant, people can still shop it, it's not out of season. How far uh, do you think you can keep up with blogging, and um, how long do you, do you want to do it for? I, I can't see myself doing it literally till the end of my life, just like, always, because, you know, we'll always be wearing clothes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it like the focus on it as much as it is now. Mm -hmm. That's, but I am starting new things, so we'll see how how those develop and how much fun I can have with them. And then the industry is always changing too. So exactly, I don't know what blogging as a 
big thing is going to be. I don't know. We're growing up now, so who knows? Maybe in ten years, all of our followers are going to be our still the same age as us and are going to follow us as like daddy bloggers or you know, like I don't know, like <laughs> grandpa bloggers. Like I don't. I, who knows? But so in that case, I. I I don't know what I would do. I'm ready for it. Like I think about it a lot. That's why I'm starting new things. Some like a shoe collection is something that's a lot more traditional and more stable. But I, I don't know. Nothing's really ever stable. Do you ever get like when you look at other bloggers and stuff like that? Do you do you get this? Do you feel discouraged that like well I feel like should I do more to get more followers or are you just like every single day? I, honestly, I, I started my blog while I was still in school and it, my life was a lot easier when I could focus on something else. Like now I've do, done it um, a, a year, mm -hmm. full time, and my brain is just constantly spinning on like what, what could you do, why are people like unfollowing you because you know like the more you grow the more people can unfollow you on a daily mm -hmm. basis. They're like oh I just don't like it. and I don't know it's, it's a lot of psychological stress. So why do you believe that people like to follow fashion bloggers? Um, <clears throat> I think fashion bloggers are a lot more relatable than models are, than magazines are. You know who you're talking to, see, because I post every day and I post a lot of personal stuff and I, I feel I post very authentically. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever post anything that, um, that I don't like. Yeah. So it's just a very personal relationship. People know who's saying it. It's not just a magazine where it says GQ. Like I love GQ. Don't get me wrong; it has all its upsets, but I think that's why bloggers kind of have a, a moment right now. How would you describe your influence in the fashion industry? I, I'm, I'm fairly well known within the industry by now. I, I, I am. I have a lot of contacts, especially here in New York. Yeah. And I work with a lot of brands. So in, in that sense, I'm definitely, I think I play somewhat of a pivotal role in like, you know, putting some, some of the new brands out there, mm -hmm. which I, you know, if I find something that's like super cool, I'll try and push them. And you know, obviously, I have my place in the industry. Not very. I'm not very fashion forward. I don't think. Like I'm. You know, how some people are get really crazy. I don't in, innovate much in terms of style. I see myself more of like as I look at myself more as like an early adapter, and like I I see what's kind of what I think is going to be really cool, and I start wearing that and kind of spread that out to the masses a little bit. Apart from the following, what else have you gained you the contribution with blogging? I mean. You know, I got I get to travel the world. I get to meet amazing people. Not only my followers, but business contacts or just other bloggers. Some one of my best friends, you met him, Nathan. Um, he he, I met him through blogging, and I meet people all around the world, which is amazing. Are there any cons to blog blogging? Do you see any negative aspects to it? From for me personally, or for, the for you personally, or just for the industry in general? Maybe there's a few people out there that aren't as, as um, authentic with their publicity, like with their sponsorships and stuff, so they might just endorse a few things because it's paid and not necessarily care about it. That's, no, no one in particular comes to mind, but that's just something that you have to be wary of, I think. There's older fashion editors and fashion directors who are, who miss, I guess, like the intimacy of the industry that was more smaller and now there's a lot of uh, editors and stuff that say, well, they're not, bloggers are not like, um, they're like more of an extended part of the right. fashion industry, they're not more of the, they're not like the experts, right. they don't see blogging as being an expert. Right, um, there's, okay, so I think bloggers somewhat have, like, have a somewhat negative uh, association because there's a lot of people that don't do it seriously and call themselves bloggers and like just want to go to Fashion Week and sit front row and be fancy for Instagram. You know, again, I, I myself actually did study fashion, so I I feel like I'm knowledgeable of you know of what's going on in the industry. And nobody can really say it's it's fashion, you know. So it's creative. Mm -hmm. There's not really much you can be an expert. Like there's no not a lot of ways you can be like an expert in it just because you study say journalism, you know, that because that's how you end up an editor, right? In yeah. the end, fashion is more about life experience and how often you're exposed to, uh, exposed to clothing. And bloggers are exposed to clothing virtually, like 24-7. Traditional print outlets are a little threatened, yeah. which has been talked about a lot in the media. I think uh, a lot of them are doing a great job at digitalizing. But altogether, I don't think there's any, any need to dismiss the validity of bloggers. Altogether. You know, it's just they have their very own role in the industry. 
Is it essential? Possibly not. Is it beneficial to the entire industry? I think so. So, what would you, what would be your advice to anyone who wants to blog? How would you say? What would be the best tactic for them to gain followers and an influence? First advice: you gotta realize that it's a, a lot harder now than it was three years ago, or f five years ago, or eight years ago, because there's a lot more people doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be difficult. But if you love fashion and photography and interacting with people, then I think it's great. If you're really passionate about that, you should go for it. Just focus on the quality of your photos. It's one of the most important things. Like if you don't put up good outfits that are well photographed and probably every day at this point, it's going to be hard to even get noticed. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then hashtagging is really important. And so you want to use relevant hashtags so people see your stuff. But then you also want to go through hashtags. Like mm -hmm. say if you want to start a menswear blog, you go through hashtag dapper. Mm -hmm. And you go through and you like photos just so people see you. Most people don't get a lot of interaction on Instagram, so if there's an extra like from someone they don't know, they're probably gonna check out your page. Mm -hmm. and then if there's quality content that I talked about before, then they're probably gonna follow you. Mm -hmm. You can do the same thing with people that, say if you have an account that is similar to a popular men's fashion account already, mm -hmm. right? So you go through their followers, and then go on every single one of their profiles and like one or two pictures. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, you kind of try and get their attention through positive engagement by liking their photos. Mm -hmm. So that in the end, relevant people, like people that are likely going to like your content, see your page, like it and follow. Mm -hmm. And then working together with other bloggers, photographers that already are a little bigger than you. If you have 200 followers, work with someone who has 500. If you have 10,000, 20,000, you know, just always, or smaller than you, doesn't matter. Any, any, any pair of eyes on your work with anybody else is going to get you farther forward. Far. How do you believe um, the fashion industry um, is influenced by blogging and how do you feel that blogging is going to change years from now? It's really impactful at a few levels, I guess. Mm -hmm. For one, anything that's like on the runway now, right, is technically supposed to come out like seven months later. Mm -hmm. And what bloggers do, it's kind of like they, they, they make the entire movement of fashion a lot faster because they see it on a one way, runway, they like it, and they like recreate it in their own way. And then the, the trend that was on the runway is already on the streets like the next day. Yeah. And that was but not the case before. No, never. It was kind of like it was much more close. So everything is becoming much more instantaneous. What bloggers do for, on the consumer end is more really involve them in the fashion industry. It's much easier for, for consumers to follow along what's happening in the industry, not only in the stores, you know, like in the retail stores where you can shop, but also like what kind of events are going on, what kind of special collections are released. It's just, I think they play a very informative role in connecting the industry and the consumers um, literally all over the world. Thanks for chatting with me. Of course, my pleasure. pleasure. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> I guess we're here. <laughs> According to statistics discovered by MediaInsight.org in 2015, 86% of millennials usually see diverse opinions through social media, which makes it likely that most of them follow some sort of blogger. I went into Soho, one of the most fashion-driven districts in New York City, to find out from streetwalkers how influential fashion bloggers are with their own styles. Is there any fashion bloggers in particular that you're inspired by? Yes, uh, I'm inspired by a bunch of them actually. I follow a few people. Um, a couple of names that just stick out are Hannah Bronfman. She's actually a DJ and an athleticism girl for Adidas. Um, there's Sincerely Julie I also follow. Um, Song by Style. Have you ever heard of the Trophy Life? It's like a, um, it's like a website slash Tumblr, but it's like a lot of fashion goes on there, hip hop going on there. Um, not quite really. <laughs> so um, where do you get your inspiration from then? Usually just what I see down the streets and what I see what people are wearing and, you know, just, just go along with it, what I feel feels nice or just, you know, just sets the mood. Well, sometimes we, uh, like, I like to follow, well, like, whatever, like, I feel like in Instagram, I guess, that's easier because you just swipe pictures mm -hmm. and you see. So I like to follow, like, anything that has to do with uh, street fashion, especially in New York mm -hmm. City. 
what do you believe makes a good fashion blogger? What's, uh, what does a fashion blogger have that is worthy of your uh, following? You have to be indigenous. Don't follow the crowd. Their content, um, not so much their following, because I feel like all the fashion bloggers started out with without a following, and they, they it grew consistently through their careers. But I feel like their content, what they're putting out there, what they're showing you, um, how they dress. I, I, I read a lot of forums. Right? Like, what is it, style, style blog, style yeah, forum? Yeah. So it's a lot more about conversation. It's more like regular dudes who have a similar appreciation for fashion, mm -hmm. and then they'll share ideas, and then you have a conversation with them. And they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it will be like more on the same basis. It won't be like, okay, this person is, is a style icon, versus this is another guy who, like, who I can learn from or has a very unique sense of style that like, I'm going to take a little inspiration from. Who would be worthy of your following if they had... Like what would draw my attention? Yeah, what would draw your attention? Um, something that's not just basic or shallow, something with actual content. Um, um, be a blogger who not only just has an idea of looks or about what feels nice or what looks nice, but something that has a positive impact on the environment, on the on society. Now, would you consider doing fashion blogging yourself? Or are you already a fashion blogger? I am not a fashion blogger and that's not something I want to do myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I would rather learn from. If I, if I was going to do it, like, what would I do that's different from what's already being done? Because, I mean, a lot of the girls kind of do the same thing. It's like, basically, you're, you're showing what you're wearing or you're going to fashion shows and writing about what they're, what's coming out next, you know what I mean, to give girls a sense of what I should buy and what's new and what's, you know what I mean, what's on trend. Do you believe that the growing influence of bloggers is a positive thing today? Yeah, it is. So that gives us... That gives us like exponential variety that we can expand, you know, we can expand the true meaning of fashion. I actually think that it has a positive sense because since like everything's changing, you know, time is changing, um, influences are changing, um, people are changing, rights are changing, there has to be a change and we can't just stay stagnated in one area. Of course, you know, trends go and come back, but it has to change at some point. I, I think it's a good thing and a bad. It's, it's just bad if you don't have money. But it's good if you have money. And the reason why I'm saying that is because these fashion bloggers, they put a lot of designer things into their, on their sites. And not even designer, just antiques and things from boutiques. So it costs money to have those things. It's not cheap. So. If you're interested in fashion, like if you have a blog, you're almost like an artist now, right? Like if you, can, if you see your blog as like, in a traditional sense, like a, what is that, a canvas? Right, you're sharing, you're sharing your, your your style ideas. You're sharing your artistic ideas. You're sharing like personal philosophies, and that's represented in the aesthetic, right? So like, I think the expanding influence of like, pers like individual bloggers is not like is not like a trend. It's more of like now the internet allows people to have like to 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 share those ideas. Where previously, like if you're in the middle of Oregon and you're like. You're like, you know, you're like you're, you're very like nature or whatever, right? And you're not in the big city metropolitan area where there's a culture of fashion. How are you going to share those unique ideas? Now you can. So I think that's awesome because like now you, you have so access to so many different perspectives. And as somebody who's not like as involved in fashion, right? I have access to these people's ideas, so I can build my own like my own like I can I can curate my own sort of understanding of fashion or my whatever aesthetic I choose to like build, right? I think it's a good thing. I think it allows girls like myself to get out there and become like get into the fashion industry quicker than rather finding a job and a career because they've kind of made their own path. You know what I mean? And so I feel like they're they're paving a path for other girls to follow in this different footstep. And it's fun to see them at fashion shows rather than celebrities all the time. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like good. It's like a like a cheer for the for the girls like us kind of thing. So I think it's a great thing. It makes you feel more connected, right? It does. It really does. Because I mean, I feel like. We're more on the same level rather than the celebrities. You I mean they've gotten there because of like singing or acting or something like that. You know what I mean? But what they've done is kind of like I could do that. So it's like intriguing and it's like um, influential. With the growing influence of social media, most print media has had to adapt to the changes brought by it. Blogging in particular has caused magazines to expand their networking in ways they never thought they would. I visited Time Inc., a publishing company that's home to over 90 magazines. InStyle's fashion director, Eric Wilson, took the time to talk to us about how fashion blogging has influenced his own work and the sort of impact it has had on magazines. 
Um, so how long have you been working in the fashion industry, writing? Or... I have been covering fashion for 19 years. I started my career at Women's Wear Daily and worked there for uh, eight years. And then I went to the New York Times for nine and I've been at InStyle for two and a half. How do you feel that um, print media has changed because of fashion blogging? And... Well, fashion magazines have changed mm -hmm. quite a bit. Print, the entire print industry has changed mm -hmm. as a whole as a result of blogging, even beyond fashion blogging. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, we've been in a period of upheaval for more than a decade now mm -hmm. when we've seen the print industry shrinking at a rapid pace as the online industry has exploded. The, the biggest change has been that the speed of news has, has just accelerated to such a degree that it's hard to stay on top of anything, um, not just when you're a reporter, but also when you're a customer. Trying to keep up with what's in fashion today requires um, a full-time assistant who can stay, stay on uh, reading all these different uh, hundreds and hundreds of shows and, uh, that are being broadcast on 60 different channels of social uh -huh. media. All the magazines are trying to adapt to how do we tell our story while social media tells the story in another way. And the customer, at the end of the day, how do they get their information? Um, that's the, the, the question we're all trying to answer at this moment uh -huh. to see who's going to survive this period of transition. So how does um, fashion blogging and social media influence in style itself? Uh, my job has always been in the business of words. Uh, we have people here who create all the imagery in the magazine, people who style the uh, celebrities, but I write stories. Uh -huh. uh, I came from a newspaper background where I was working on a daily basis to a magazine which you would think is a monthly, but that's never been the case in the last five years because we produce in style.com uh, close Content, to 50 yeah. articles every day. Uh, we're going to go to 100 within the next uh, six months to a year. This is all about uh, telling our stories in what marketers like to call omni-channel format, where you're reaching customers everywhere they're at and on every device they have. We are thinking about things in a, in a much different way. Um, when I book a story or interview the designer, I also arrange to have a video camera there if I can, so I can create a video that'll go online when the feature comes out. I do a separate set of 10 to 15 questions that will be used to create web content, also timed around the issue date to promote that. I uh, take pictures on my cell phone and save them in a file so that I can post them on Instagram when the issue comes out. Uh -huh. I'm much more um, attuned to the branding of, of, uh, of content today. Uh -huh. And I grew up in between gen two generations that felt very differently about this. Um, I come from a very traditional background. My grandfather published a, a, a print newspaper in West Virginia, but at the same time, um, the, a younger generation has has softened their view on the reporter being part of the story and becoming a brand. They they are expecting, in a way, to know um, to to have access to the person speaking and to to hear about their stories. It's a it's a very dangerous line, and I think I spend time every day thinking about what I'm doing and whether it corrupts anything that could be viewed as um, as too cozy with an advertise. Um, and in style, you know, we're not covering Watergate, but we are covering fashion in a very serious way because our mission is to tell people what they need to buy this season in a simple, clear way to help them make sense of this fashion industry and not get caught up in the, the, the nonsense and the spending too much money on clothes mm -hmm. or wasting their money. We want to get, make them informed shoppers. Do you feel like you have any objections to um, the, incre the increasing influence that um, fashion bloggers have in the industry today? Why or not? Objections, no, but concerns I have mm -hmm. quite a few. And, and they're, they're similar to concerns I've, I've had about other aspects of the industry, which is mm -hmm. um, how the message gets contaminated. The, there is, you know, at InStyle we cover celebrity, we cover red carpet. And, mm -hmm. I'm not fooling anyone to tell you that that's all organically happening, that these actresses are appearing on the red carpet wearing these dresses. But what I get concerned about with the social media phenomenon is that it is so um, much closer t to the house in terms of the relationships that are being formed between uh, large designer companies and very popular bloggers. Ultimately, how do you become an influencer if you're a commercial? It's not the same and, it, and it, this is moving so quickly that um, 
and it's so competitive between the different voices to get those deals and to get access to the clothes or to create these imagery. At what point does it does the message start to fall apart a little bit? I my concern is that there, this for designers has been a bit of a golden goose, uh -huh. and with six hundred big designer companies out there, the goose doesn't have that many eggs to lay. Um, it's gonna it's gonna eventually uh, dry up. It'll turn into something else, but the customer could very, very quickly lose their interest in fashion altogether. Uh -huh. And that could spell disaster not just for one or two designers, but for an entire industry. Yeah. Now, do you feel that because of everything you explained, um, that you guys are required to stay in touch with like um, fashion bloggers and um, anyone who goes to events through social media? Is that a requirement for you? <laughs> it's information. And mm -hmm. how it gets out there is, you know, really the key here. How are readers getting their information? Are they getting it from magazines today? Yes. Are they getting it from Instagram today? Big yes. Are they getting it from reality television? Absolutely. So we have to figure out how to not only coexist with other forms of media, but also to adapt their practices and, and evolve our products so that it meets the customer's needs and gives them information they can't find on social media. Mm -hmm. While also we need to create our own social media channels and our own blogs and um, adapt to that. So, you know, require, of course, we, we have to. It's, mm -hmm. it's a part of the survival of the industry is to adapt to the changing way that people communicate. We interact with the bloggers, we get to know them. They're not enemies. And mm -hmm. there was probably a brief moment when they came about in the fashion industry where it very much felt like that. Mm -hmm. Because it was the old versus the new and you saw this big, the big changes happening. Um, and I'm going to take you back to a moment. Okay. 2007, 2008, where, where we really started seeing the arrival of bloggers in the fashion industries. And foremost among them was Brian Boyd, uh, a young man from the Philippines who came to fame because uh, he his, his posts about Marc Jacobs caught the attention of someone there because they were so emphatically and, and enthusiastic that they decided to do a collaboration with him. And it uh, legitimized this voice very quickly that, that someone like Marc Jacobs was paying attention. In the face of traditional media people who had spent 20, 30 years working up their, their ladder just to get to the third row. Yeah. So, and then you have these people just exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is what I mean by fashion. It can, mm -hmm. can tell the story in a more uh, exaggerated way because you've got these crazy systems of hierarchies that are in, in systems. I mean, can you imagine a 13-year-old going from to Vogue and having suddenly a big perch in the front row? Yeah, no, yeah. it's never that would never have happened. <laughs> but give them a computer and a return a send button, and mm -hmm. suddenly they have a voice. Yeah. It's heard. We all recognize that we we need to coexist, and we can learn from each other. Social media is only as good as its content, just mm -hmm. like a magazine. So if there were no magazines or a uh, system of critics that um, bring intellectual rigor and institutional knowledge, history to the story, they wouldn't have anything to say. Yeah. Um, or they, they would be all saying the same thing. It's, it's a, it, fashion is a game of lemmings and being the person who stands out can um, either get you killed or make you a star. So would you say you have any advice for anyone who's trying to get into the fashion industry or do blogging? Um, if so, would, I mean, obviously you're going to be biased and say you should maybe try to get into um, mm -hmm. the magazine industry, which is more, um, but it's so much easier to try to blog and get noticed. So I would advise going into yeah. blogging, frankly. Yeah. I mean, anyone with a computer can be a blogger, mm -hmm. and myself included. I, I write two to three posts every week online. If I, uh, I, I don't see how that's different than what any other blogger does, mm -hmm. um, except for it's my voice. And that's what my advice to you is, is to figure out what that is that you have to say, mm -hmm. why I should click on your article or respond to your email. The only way to create a career in this business today is to become a uh, a valuable resource of information that is um, that gives people a reason to look. Mm -hmm. The you know so many so many blogs look alike today. Mm -hmm. So many bloggers, their style looks alike. It's a, it's a really strange phenomenon. And I'll be fascinated how it comes to an end, but it will. And over the last five years, it, it has gone from Bill Cunningham being out there to photograph a few women who looked very stylish, to probably. 
several hundred people who are dressed up in outlandish outfits with mm-hmm. photographers who are friends of theirs or their boyfriends taking pictures of them, posing, pretending they're going to a show, which they're not even actually going to, yeah, yeah. Um, to create these very simple, like, blown up images that show them doing this sort of funny girl pose. <laughs> <laughs> so nonchalant, checking my email. Mm-hmm. And their, their dream is to become that person who gets paid a million dollars to post about X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Um, designer and that number is not made up by the way people get paid seven figures now to, mm-hmm. to be reaching the influencing people yeah. um, so well, how are you gonna stand out in that how are you gonna get the capital to build up that audience in the first place and that's a question that's really hard to answer if you don't know what you want to say mm-hmm. if you don't know who you are and what your style is and how it's different than what already exists out there and what you bring to it that's new What's interesting about doing, starting with blogging is that you get an instant reaction. You see what people respond to, and you can find out very quickly yeah. if it's the right thing for you and if you enjoy mm-hmm. doing it. Whereas magazines, you know, you're going in after one of very few jobs, and they're they're increasingly difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Um, that you may end up spending a lot of time working on something that you don't really love. Even to break into a magazine today, you have to come with something already accomplished. And that's where blogging can um, give you an example yeah. of, of like what you can do. Like once you've gotten some followers, we've hired from people who have come up through social media, uh-huh. and have had a lot of success with them because they've had time to figure out their angle on things, what makes them distinctive. They know they know their voice and their style, and they bring a lot to the book. Uh-huh. So, do you feel that anyone with um, good fashion sense um, can blog? I mean, they have they know how to stand out now, mm-hmm. but. I'm sorry to say that no, I don't, uh-huh. because I think, and this goes back to what I was talking about, this kind of that fine line you walk, uh-huh. the, the reality is in, in blogging you also have to be a marketer, yeah. and that is, is where it is, would make a traditional journalist scream, because we don't like to mix business with journalism, we, we want to be pure and about the That's words right. and the images. But how are you going to get people to notice you if you're not out there promoting yourself? It, when I say it's easier to start in blogging, I mean it's easier because you have the tools in front of you, um, most likely to get something published. But to get something read is another story altogether, mm-hmm. and that's where you have to put on your marketing hat and how you're going to promote that message on whatever social media channel is to get people's attention. Well, thank you for talking to me, and um, it's I hope that people listen to your advice. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Pleasure. Yeah. The fashion industry is always changing adapting to all the changes that they have had to work with, as seen these last several years within the digital age. As influential as fashion blogging has been, one can never be certain how long the success of it will last. One thing is for certain, fashion is an art, and art never dies, no matter how many changes come along with it.